Thanks everybody for coming. Uh, my name is Bob Calloway. I'm uh, Chief Architect and Senior Manager of Technical Marketing for uh, all things OpenStack at NetApp. And uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about OpenStack Manila, which is uh, a recently incubated project. Um, uh, we'll cover today, if my clicker will work, there we go. Uh, quickly give you an overview of the project, uh, go through a couple different use cases that, that are relevant uh, in terms of where we see the fit both within OpenStack as, as, uh, as well as more generally within IT infrastructure. Uh, I always love to do uh, demos because if I'm sitting in your chair, it's like if PowerPoint charts are great, but demos are better. So we'll go through a quick couple minute demo um, uh, just to kind of give you a sense of what the user experience is like with Manila. Uh, talk a little bit about the architecture, uh, some of the design points that are that are relevant. Um, briefly mention a couple of the drivers that exist. Uh, I certainly don't have enough time in 40 minutes to go over all of the vendors and all of the drivers, but I do want to just give you a sense of what's out there today and what's coming. Um, we've also done uh, been doing some work at NetApp around automation for deployment and, and management of Manila. So uh, we'll briefly talk on Puppet Manila, which is a new module that's now in StackForge. Um, talk a little bit about what we did in the Juno release, what we're going to do in the Kilo release. Uh, looking forward and then a uh, quick blurb on how to get enga engaged in, in the platform. So hopefully by now you guys have heard of Manila, but if not, you know, the, one of the easiest ways to describe it if you're familiar with OpenStack is, uh, you know, Manila is for shared file systems what Cinder is for block storage. So it's a, a self-service uh, provisioning and management framework for dispensing shared file systems as a core unit alongside block and object within an OpenStack cloud. Um, you know, the, the, the use cases would be someone would come in and say, well, I need a, you know, let's say I've, I've spun up some additional VMs for a new marketing project. There's already an existing file share that, that other marketing VMs have access to. And I simply just need to enable, you know, new access to, to these new VMs that have launched to, you know, handle that burst in work that, that have come in. Or perhaps I'm spinning up a new workload, say, you know, a new R&D type project. I need new VMs and then there's a need for shared storage uh, across those VMs. So, the, you know, the Manila API, which you'll see in the demo, is very much create a share, delete a share, take a snapshot of a share, uh, very basic vendor agnostic uh, set of principles in terms of how do you uh, how you interact with the service. And we feel that, you know, shared file systems have had a long legacy of success, um, you know, as a, as a key tool within IT infrastructure over the past 15, 20 years, or even longer than that. And so in, in a cloud-specific context, we're seeing a lot of uh, kind of purpose-built services emerge, things like database as a service. So if you're familiar with the Trove project, um, you know, a lot of Oracle systems and MySQL systems in the world run on top of NFS uh, as the backing store. So thinking about how would we integrate some of those be best practices and proven architectures into a cloud context, shared file systems has really been missing. You know, if you think about uh, OpenStack in the context of, you know, it's, it's very much a mirror of Amazon. So if you look at Amazon Web Services and their full catalog of services, um, that's pretty much a one-for-one -one map for all everything that's in OpenStack core. Um, but there's no Amazon service that dispenses NFS or SIFS on demand. Um, but we think that that's generally applicable and that's why we started the Manila project. Um, the other minor thing is that, uh, you know, if you believe what analysts tell you, which, you know, generally they're right within a few standard deviations, um, two-thirds of all storage in the world is sold for file-based use cases. What, what does this really mean? There's a lot of management and provisioning and overhead and, and you know, life cycle maintenance that, that occurs for these artifacts. So adding a sense of automation, repeatability, consistent, you know, consistent behavior, uh, all within a context of a cloud operating system makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of a project. So kind of diving into a couple different use cases, uh, certainly the most natural is seeing shared file systems alongside block and file and other storage artifacts within OpenStack. So this just kind of gives you a, a, a logical diagram showing you all the core OpenStack services with Manila, you know, uh, the shared file system service kind of sitting inside of that architecture, interacting with other services like Cinder, Nova, Neutron, as it builds up provisions infrastructure, provisions these artifacts, um, Manila sits alongside that. So. You know, the, the, one of the major aims for Manila is that anytime I would deploy an OpenStack cloud, I should see that, that file share service sit alongside block and object. Um, but given that we talked to a lot of customers around uh, network attached storage and, and shared file systems, there's another predominant use case that comes to, to the mind of our customers quite a bit, which is I already, I, perhaps, you know, I've, I've used NFS or I've used SIFS for a variety of different projects and I, I have existing business processes or existing kind of homegrown technologies to provision shared file systems and understand who owns what, how do I do quotas, how do I do size management, et cetera. 
what I'd really like to do is take that piece of software, that, that set of Perl scripts that, that one guy in the company wrote, understands, and actually you know, operates, I'd really like to move that towards more of an open standard model such that I can plug in different vendor technologies behind it. I get a community uh, from, from uh, the OpenStack ecosystem around that so such that the one guy doesn't support the solution in, inside my organization. So while we envision Manila to be obviously a core part of, uh, of many OpenStack deployments, we also recognize that our, there are customers that leverage this modular nature of OpenStack to deploy things standalone. So we have customers that deploy Cinder just by itself if they're perhaps not ready to avail all of what OpenStack brings to the table. And we expect that Manila will be uh, used in, in, in very much uh, that same pattern. So getting to the uh, aforementioned uh, demo, we'll quickly go over here to, uh, to my wonderful recording. So what we're going to do is kind of back to the, the use case chart that existed before. We'll look at uh, two use cases. Uh, one is, well, we'll look at just one given the interest of time, which is we'll, we'll go into Horizon. Um, you'll see here on the, on the left side of the menu, and my apologies for this not being the, the full screen, but uh, on the left here you'll see, you know, just alongside instances and volumes, you'll see shares now in Horizon if you, if you install the uh, Horizon plugin for Manila. So it's a first class citizen per se. Um, you know, you see the tabs here around shares, snapshots, share networks. So the, the demo, what we'll do is we'll actually provision a new share, um, and then we'll go into a, a, a couple of existing Nova instances and we'll add access uh, to those. So uh, we'll see that there's already two shares there. We'll quickly look at the list of instances, and we see there's, there's four Ubuntu instances. Uh, just for the sake of uh, consistency with the, with the setup chart, they're named 1, 6, 7, and 8. So we'll go to the, uh, quickly the share networks, and there's a concept that I'll go through a little bit later uh, that associates uh, the actual network topology that a, that a tenant of OpenStack has defined. You need to make sure that when you provision a shared file system, that, that it's accessible over that uh, Neutron-specific uh, network. Um, my apologies for that. So that's one of the interesting technical challenges with, with Manila is that we have to make sure that you know, shared file systems are accessible over the network. And so we have to make sure that we're plumbed into the correct uh, networking topology. Uh, you know, and, and Neutron supports a variety of different layer, layer 2 protocols, VXLAN, VN, uh, VLAN, GRE, et cetera. So Manila has to figure out how to interoperate with those different frameworks in, in a way that's seamless to the end consumer. They just simply say, I want a share of this given size, and a way the system just needs to figure it out, how to provision that in a fully multi-tenant environment. So just for the sake of argument, we've got those four guests. They all exist on, on the Neutron network named private. And so what we'll do now is, uh, oh, one other minor detail with the demo, is uh, the actual NFS export location is stored as uh, metadata on the individual share. And, um, when you think about this in the context of uh, you know the comparison to to block storage, there's a, there's a if you've ever used Cinder, there's an operation called attach volume to an existing instance. Uh, with the concept of a of a shared file system, there's not a natural uh, certainly there's a I'd like to a, virtually attach this share to a VM, but there's no way to kind of raise a PCI interrupt on a VM and say ah there's a new shared file system that you need to go mount uh, you know, to set up ahead of time. Whereas with block storage, you can raise that PCI interrupt from the hypervisor and, it, oh, I have a new block device, I know what I should do with it. So there's a, there's a, a set of challenges around mount automation, figuring out when these shares are created, how do I actually attach them to a new VM in a completely automated fashion. So we're having to come up with a variety of different approaches to, to address that particular, uh, that particular issue. So we'll walk through, uh, we'll go back and we'll create an, a share in Horizon. So again, it, it looks and feels just like you were creating a block volume. You specify the name, the storage protocol you want, you want to use, which is either NFS or, or SIFS today. Uh, we are adding some new protocols in the future. Um, you specify the size and then the, the actual share network, which again is kind of the mapping between the Neutron network uh, uh, to the individual share. So we go off, we, we issue that request into the REST API through Horizon. That share will get created and provisioned behind the scenes, and it will be marked uh, as available. And then what we can do is we can drive down into the, the actual metadata for this new share um, and set the access rules such that we know the IP addresses of the, of the two VMs that we wanted to grant access to. So we'll specify these two addresses um, via their IP. We'll click Add. And then what we'll do is we'll actually log into the VMs. I'll prove that you can actually mount these shares via that, uh, that uh, export string uh, that I showed a little bit earlier. So as soon as the, uh, there we go. The, so we'll go ahead and we'll quickly log in over the Neutron networks into uh, guest number four. Uh, so we'll specify the, 
log in stuff, and then we'll, we'll go back and we'll get the mount string. So again, what you would typically do if you're mounting an NFS share to a, to a Linux host, right? You need, you need to call mount and uh, pass it a string. So we'll um, there we go. get that out of there. So um, we'll go back, we'll get the, the actual mount string, uh, copy and paste it out of Horizon. You can also call via the CLI or via the API to get this information as well, uh, and if you were going to script against this. So it's all available programmatically. So we'll then specify that uh, the mount point is this new directory that we've created, um, and then we'll just change in that directory. We'll write a file to prove that we can actually do data path IO on it. Um, you can see here the information from the DF command showing that it's a one gig share um, and you know basically un unused. We'll then write a file just to say hello from guest number uh, guest number six. We'll then uh, quickly switch over to the other guests that we added the access rule to, uh, just to prove that, again, it's a shared file system. Multiple clients should have access to it at the same time. Uh, so we'll create a mount point. Um, we'll mount the, the, uh, the share. And my apologies for not knowing to call sudo. <laughs> but uh, you live and you learn. Um, so you'll, uh, you'll mount this up, and then we'll, we'll change into the, the directory. And we should see that guest six file exist. It does exist. Um, we'll then just copy it over uh, into a file called guest8. We'll change the content real quick uh, with uh, my favorite editor, VI. Sorry to any Emacs folks in the room. Uh, I know that can be a controversial thing. So you can now see that you know, we've written that data in. And the last thing that I want to show here is we do have full integration with in, in terms of the quota system, and that is actually visualized within Horizon. So you can see the numbers of shares, the actual total st uh, amount of storage consumed. Um, as well as uh, the number of shared networks. So all those can actually be limited via quotas and all have the same type of uh, API uh, controls around them. So if you're familiar with going into policy.json and actually setting, I want administrators to be able to add, you know, change these types of things or I only want privileged users or um, you, know, you're, you can actually set up the, uh, the access control uh, in the same way that you would do any other OpenStack service. So switching back to uh, PowerPoint. Sure. So is it possible to use Manila as a standalone service if I only have Keystone, Neutron, and Manila, and then on Neutron I, prov I, I create a flat, flat provider network, mm -hmm. then would it be able to like just serve it as a... Yeah, any client that ac can access that network should have access to the share. So it's it doesn't... Currently, Manila requires Neutron. That's something that we're actually moving more towards a plug-in model in the future, such that if you don't deploy Neutron, as we hear a lot of people saying, we want to eventually, right now, maybe not. So we want to be able to support both modes. Because again, thinking back to that kind of standalone use case that I mentioned at the outset, we want to make, make sure that we're not requiring Neutron. It's certainly a, an option that we'll support uh, moving forward. So the VM has to see the share. I'm yeah. a, yes. That, that automation will go through the. So. Do you have attached volume in case of failure? Yeah. So that, it's an interesting technical challenge because mount requires a privileged uh, user, as a, as you guys saw. That, um, and second, so there's a security thing. Do you really want Manila to log into your instance with root permissions and yeah. and do that? Um, how do you raise a notification to say a new share exists? So do we put a notification on a queue and let you read off the queue? Do we integrate with cloud in it? I mean, there's a variety of different approaches. Some will. Some people are comfortable with SSH giving SSH keys to OpenStack and having you just automate it, and other people are absolutely not, right? So we're not going to impose one solution to that problem. We'll probably just have a variety of different frameworks that, that will su support. Is there a big advantage in having like a volume that is shared so that the instance can see? So I'm not so sure. I So Cinder actually doesn't allow you to have multiple uh, volumes or uh, multiple hosts attached to a single volume quite yet. And even if you do, you're attaching multiple hosts to a block volume. So you, the, the upper layer <coughs> applications has to manage access to that shared medium. Whereas a file system actually has locking built in for such a thing. Is there a big disadvantage in making the shared file system appearing like a volume so that you can connect it dynamically? Uh, so uh, happy to answer that question uh, after the fact, given I only have uh, 40 minutes. So. If you don't mind, we can take that offline. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
So I wanted to quickly go through kind of what are the key objects within, within Manila. So obviously a share is kind of the, the big deal, kind of like a volume would be for Cinder. So again, the user says, I want this size, this protocol, and this kind of share type. So just as Cinder has a concept of a volume type to be able to uh, have an administrator define either a gold, silver, bronze, or a workload aligned label, you can do the same thing within Manila uh, and have those uh, capabilities reported back from individual drivers into the scheduler framework. As you saw, we have access rules notion as well. So what actual clients can access the share? You can specify that by IP with the CIDR suffix. So if you wanted an entire subnet to have access versus uh, an individual host, you can handle I either model. But it's not per user. It's not groups, users. Let me right. pause you to the next chart. Right, next so, so you can do IP level roles. And then as I mentioned, the share network is the association. And an individual share can only be a member of a single neutron network at any given time. Um, we do have the concept of a security service, so thanks for the segue, uh, to where you can actually connect into an, uh, an Active Directory system or an LDAP system and assign user-based uh, relationships between an individual share, such that, you know, again, if, if I have a heavily Microsoft infrastructure, a lot of clients, and that share access is, is done through AD rules, uh, we have to be able to integrate with that and, and support that. So that's uh, do, uh, done through an object called the security service. Just like with Cinder, we have the concept of taking a snapshot. So this is a single point in time operation to say, save the state of what this share looks like. And that's actually persisted uh, after the fact. Those snapshots are read only. Um, however, you can use them as a source content for a new share. Um, so just like with Cinder, I can take a snapshot of a volume and then create a new volume from snapshot. Again, Manila and Cinder from an API perspective look very, very similar. So um, if that helps with how you, how you think about this. Uh, again, similar to Cinder, we have the concept of uh, supporting multiple backends, so multiple vendors, different uh, drivers can hook into the scheduler, and then uh, individual vendors obviously code to drivers to affect uh, the implementation of, of the Manila API. And so at a, at a very high architectural view, um, we require a SQL database. We have an API Python process uh, running off of the WSGI framework. Um, you know, the, the scheduler exists as well as a separate process. Those processes talk to one another over AMQP. Um, and then you have one or more share uh, processes that map to individual backends, plus an additional process that kind of acts as the manager of those individual shares. And it's the share processes that actually deal with talking to the individual storage subsystem. So if you're talking to uh, Nova and Cinder, in the case of our reference implementation, the, it's a share process that's doing that. In the case where you're using the NetApp specific driver for clustered on tap, that's the, the process that's actually handling that communication. Another thing to point out is that Manila does not sit in the data path between client and server in this case. It's simply a provisioning and management framework. So it'll create things and tell the client and the server about each other, but after that it gets out of the way. So it's not like there's a new performance implication of, of this existing um, with man the Manila processes in general. As I mentioned at the outset, you know, the introduction of the network uh, uh, kind of intersection with, with Manila uh, sets up an, an inter a very interesting set of kind of uh, use cases, some of which where you know, a customer perhaps hasn't adopted Neutron at all. You've got just flat layer three networking everywhere. And the backend storage actually doesn't support any elegant layer two segmentation. So you know, new, uh, Manila has to be able to support that direct ma mapping between a share on, a, on an IP network. And that comes up a lot where if I have an existing service that isn't VLAN aware or VXLAN aware, it simply just assumes there's IP access from everyone. You know, Manila needs to be able to support that. On the flip side, you know, you've got somebody who's heavily invested in, let's say, a technology like VXLAN. And their backend storage may have support for VLANs. So when Neutron comes up, you have to figure out how to bridge these two potentially disparate network technologies together. So what we've been working on are kind of... Uh, I mean, technically, I guess you could call them network bridges, but things that would actually bridge the two uh, layer two pr protocols together such that you can get IP traffic to flow to support connectivity. So while I won't go into all the details of, of, of this table, um, given the amount of time that I have, I did just want to point out that there's a variety of different use cases that Manila needs to adapt to. Some of these we kind of support um, you know, out of the box, some of which require calling out to Neutron and, and future innovation, to be frank. Um, that we're kind of figuring out what are the best models as Neutron matures and, and, and evolves along with the rest of OpenStack. So I do want to talk a little bit about some of the drivers that we have available. Um, so I've talked about, you know, and just like uh, most other OpenStack uh, projects, we have a reference driver, a reference implementation um, built completely on open source software. What it actually does to, to supply shares, it will actually spin up a Nova instance under a private service tenant. 
um, that actually hosts, uh, it's, you know, by default it's in a stock Ubuntu image with, uh, with an NFS server and a Samba server installed. And then when you, we get an API request to go create a 5 gig SIF um, share, what we'll actually do is we'll create a 5 gig cinder volume, attach it to that Nova service instance, and then export Samus. We'll lay down a file system and export that through the VM. So, you know, while we don't envision a, a lot of people would actually use that in production, it's a way to at least get started with the service and understand kind of what the implications are, test it out, and, and move forward. Um, you know, NetApp, uh, obviously they, they pay my bills, so we, I have to mention that we have a driver uh, with Manila, uh, specifically with our cluster data on tap um, platform. We do, uh, it's, to be clear, Manila is not a NetApp only uh, thing as a fully integrated and incubated project. We have a variety of different vendors that are integrated. So EMC has a driver, Red Hat has a driver, um, IBM has a driver that's up on uh, Garrett at the moment in review, HP is working on a driver. Uh, and there's more, more to come. So if you uh, join our, our OpenStack meetings, um, you'll see a lot of different vendors coming in trying to learn more about the service. How do they write different drivers? So it's a very active and growing uh, community uh, to itself. Um, to give you an example of, of what a, a vendor driver uh, kind of looks like uh, behind the scenes, um, we'll use the NetApp one as an example. So we'll, you know, the individual uh, driver process that we showed from the architecture will then call out to the NetApp storage uh, to do uh, provisioning operations. So we'll create a new NFS export or a new SIFS export. It will then create a new what's called a data, in NetApp speak, it's called a, a data lift or a data logical interface. It'll put that on the right um, network segment. So it'll apply the right VLAN tag uh, if you've got that specified in Neutron. And then it will actually call out to the storage controller to set up the IP rules so that uh, that actually is enforced not at the hypervisor but at the storage system itself. So it's enforced at the last mile uh, to be as secure as possible. So that's just to give you a flare of how a, a kind of a production grade uh, you know, enterprise class storage system would integrate with Manila. That's what it looks like uh, at a high level. From an automation perspective, um, you know, Installing new services uh, can often by hand, if you've ever gone through and downloaded code from Git and tried to, to do it by yourself, it, it can sometimes be a bit challenging. Um, and, and even thinking forward to when Manila uh, becomes part of OpenStack Core, we've got to have support to integrate with the, the different distribution vendors. And a lot of them have chosen things like Puppet and Chef or Ansible, uh, technologies like that to build their, their installers off of. So we wanted to make sure that we support those frameworks in order to make Manila successful and, and accessible to, to end customers. So one of the things that we've been working on on my team at NetApp is actually writing a Puppet module for Manila. So if you go to StackForge now, uh, there's a new project called Puppet Manila that's there. You can pull down the code. Uh, since it's on StackForge, if you have updates or changes or bugs, uh, you know, it's all, all done through Garrett. So it's the normal standard process within OpenStack to, to get engaged and get involved. Uh, and just to give you a sense, if you've never seen a Puppet Manifest, this is what they actually look like under the covers. Um, apologies that it's uh, perhaps a little small to read, but you specify the connectivity to, uh, to the uh, AMQP server, this, the SQL database, as well as particular artifacts around what you want the keystone credentials to be. If you want to install the scheduler service as well as the share service, then you can define driver-specific fields to say, oh, if I'm connecting to a NetApp system, here's the IP address, here are the credentials that you use, et cetera. Puppet figures out, oh, I'm actually running on an Ubuntu host. I need to go pull these packages from an Ubuntu cloud archive. Or if I'm running on Red Hat, it'll go say, ah, there's an RDO repo that has these Manila RPMs that exist. I'll go and download them and install all the dependencies and figure it all out from there. So, uh, you know, Puppet gives you that framework to kind of uh, apply or at least declare your intent and let Puppet figure out the details of how it actually goes and, and affects uh, what you want it to do. In the, uh, in the Juno release, uh, we were very busy, and I know we have several of the core members in the room uh, as well. So if you have particular questions on some of the contributions or items in here, feel free to, uh, to raise your hands and guys chime in if, if you want. Um, so the big, the big milestone was obviously getting to incubated state, and that happened at the TC meeting at the end of August. So we're, we're really happy that, uh, that that's now official and behind us. Um, we did see a transition for the core Manila modules. Uh, from, they're now not on StackForge anymore. They're now under the OpenStack uh, project on GitHub. So in case you were looking at this before, you've got to note that the URLs actually have changed. Um, we have released Puppet Manila, as I said. We've done a lot around making it easier for people to come on board and not only use Manila, but also develop in Manila. So we've done a lot of work around uh, developer and, and admin docs. We've uh, added this new concept of a share server to try to formalize kind of this, this behind the scenes, whether it's a Nova VM or whether it's an artifact within the, uh, the actual vendor-specific implementation that kind of 
uh, corresponds to a container uh, that manages the access for multiple shares within, uh, within a tenant. So this concept of a share server now exists and now has full API support as, uh, as an object. And that helps to kind of formalize some of the new use cases that we see moving forward. Uh, along with any maturing product, we're always adding new tests, uh, test cases, adding stuff to gate to improve quality. Uh, we've ripped out a lot of code that uh, kind of was one off as we were growing the project and tried to standardize with, with what's in Oslo. Um, so that's been a significant improvement. We've also had some feedback from some early users around, hey, this API is great, but I'd really like the ability to filter this down so that I don't collect everything at the outset and have to filter through it in my code. Uh, so being able to kind of better specify some search options and a variety of other things we've improved upon. To give you a sense of where we're going uh, in, the, in the Kilo release as well as, as for moving forward, um, I do want to call out briefly that we have design sessions uh, with Manila starting tomorrow, Ben? Tomorrow afternoon. Tomorrow afternoon in the hotel across the street. Yeah. Um, so there's now, with it being a fully incubated uh, project, we have kind of our own track and our own sessions. So if you're interested to learn more about where we're going, uh, feel free to come and join us. Um, some of the things we're going to be working on in Kilo are around uh, adding additional capability into the scheduler. So Cinder recently added uh, the concept of uh, resource pools. Uh, we think that's a really attract attractive idea to take into Manila. So we'll look at that contribution and figure out how to integrate that concept uh, into our service. We're also going to be continuing to, uh, to add automation support. So we've done Puppet now. We'll be looking at Chef and some of the other popular frameworks to, to add hooks into. In terms of the kind of the day-to-day -day writing code, we're actually looking at the third-party CI framework that's now uh, emerging and figuring out how do we integrate that into our, 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 um, uh, our processes around Garrett and, uh, and the upstream CI system. And uh, we obviously want to become uh, a successful project and, and a core part of OpenStack, so making sure that we're hitting all the milestones that are required to, uh, to become a fully uh, core system, uh, core module within the community is, is important. Around the networking stuff, uh, we're also, you know, as I mentioned, we're working on this network bridge to be able to handle different technologies uh, in a seamless fashion. Uh, so, and also removing the dependency on Neutron is a core item for us moving forward. Um, adding capability around um, bringing existing shares under the management realm of Manila. So I've got a shared file system on a, on a, on a, on a NetApp controller, an EMC controller. I want Manila to manage its lifecycle and its access rather than some homegrown system. So the ability to kind of start to manage or stop managing a, a share uh, is something that we'll be adding. Uh, replication, a replication framework to be able to create a share such that I know that behind the scenes is actually replicated to meet some RPO or RTO objective. Um, doing backup, working on the automated mount stuff. You know, these are all areas that we need, uh, we need to improve upon and obviously you know, it's a call to, to you guys now in the community. Uh, if this is an area of interest, certainly we'd love for you to get involved in any of these areas. And as time goes on, obviously the lights go out uh, <laughs> or back on. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, We'll start to think about how do we integrate at the, like the triple O level, figuring out are there, is there a place, and we, we think there is, for shared file systems actually at the undercloud. So how can we use NFS to avail live migrations of VMs or to set up backends for, for uh, provisioning sender volumes, for example. So we think there's some interesting use cases around uh, kind of the under the undercloud, as well as introducing more of a formal concept around quality of service for individual shares. That's something that we'll improve upon later. Uh, and of course, you know, things change. It's hard to tell what OpenStack will look like 12 months from now. So that's why you see the list of content, you know, tailing off because things things will come up, things will change. So, uh, just to give you a sense of of where we're going. So I do want to leave a little bit of time for questions uh, at the end, but I do want to also kind of give you a, a pointer in terms of where to get started. So. Uh, if you guys are, are developers, then you're probably familiar with DevStack by now. If you're not, you should be. Um, if you want a kind of a, a, a hint of how to get DevStack configured with Manila working, I'd point you to a blog post that uh, one of the guys, Greg, on my team did um, that kind of walks you through how to point at the, the Manila repos, set up all the local.conf uh, variables to, to make sure that everything works out of the cover with the Horizon plugin so that you can get started. So uh, feel free to, uh, to visit our blog. In terms of getting access to Manila in a pre-built form, we've been working with distribution partners like Red Hat, like SUSE, to get builds of Manila uh, done. So we actually do have um, 
at the moment, an RPM built uh, off of the RDO distribution as well as the OpenSUSE distribution uh, as part of their Juno releases, which both uh, recently went out the door. Um, we haven't integrated quite yet with their installer frameworks. We've got uh, integration with Packstack actually as a pending review with, uh, with the Red Hat folks on Garrett. Um, we're also working with the SUSE folks and the Ubuntu folks as well. So all of that will come here in time. Um, but at the moment, DevStack's probably the easiest way to pull the, pull the bits down and get started, but we're, we realize that people want to use the distribution. In terms of uh, other ways to engage with us, if you have questions, concerns, hey, this doesn't work right, um, you know, obviously this is OpenStack, so IRC is a great way to get a hold of us. We're in OpenStack Manila on Freenode. We have weekly meetings just like every other OpenStack project uh, at uh, 3 o'clock in the afternoon UTC on Thursdays. And um, just to point out a couple of the core members, so Ben Swartzlander, who's the PTL, is, is back there. Uh, Valeri is along the wall. Uh, he's also core. And if somebody else is Manila core in the room that I don't recognize, um, I apologize. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, these are the guys that are here this week. If you have questions or concerns, um, you know, now's the time to, to ask as well as to engage us later. So any other questions? <coughs> So there, for a shared network, there's a one-to-one -one association for a given neutron network and neutron subnet to a shared network. So I can create as many shares as I want on that shared network, but what that does is it allows us to, to know when we call out to neutron and we ask for an IP address for the share, we have to know what subnet that it needs to exist on and what, what segment effectively from a layer two perspective. Correct. Yes. Yeah. You had a um, description of IP address earlier, but I was yes. wondering if there was a reason that you didn't have restrictions by um, VM name. Uh, so, or instance ID or something like that. Uh, yeah. So if you address pages, then Yeah. Um, so that's a, that's a question that I think we've raised and I think we've... We're working on it. We're working on it is the PTL's <laughs> answer. So. We're working on it. No, but in terms of, yeah, it, you think about the context of a heat template, right? I'm not going to know what the IP was when I launch a stack, right? So I need the way to say, I, but I mean that instance. Whatever its ID is, I need that to be referenced to. So, yeah, that's, you know, IPs are the common way that that's done for shared file systems. That's why we started with that. But, yeah, that's adding in some of the cloud polish to, to the use cases. Yeah. Yes. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Um, so that's something that we're working on as a community, but I don't know. I don't know that the code is actually ready for for use that you can plug in. I know Heat also has a framework for incubated projects that have to contribute in a particular way, and so um, we're we're working on that. And, and one of the guys on my team is actually working on that uh, as I speak. But um, I don't think we've. I've, I haven't seen a demo of it working yet. So. <laughs> Any other questions? I know it's really hot and it's really crowded, but I want to make sure you guys get the answers. Do you have any plans to support uh, guest agent? A guest agent. Yeah, so that's, that's another approach in terms of uh, the mount automation. Um, something like a cloud init may be present in a lot of VMs that get spun up on OpenStack. So figuring out is there a way that we could hook into something like a daemon that already is running within a guest. Obviously, that won't work for Windows, so we'll have to figure out an approach for Windows guests. Uh, as well, but you know, there's a variety of different approaches to solve it. A guest agent would be one. So. Uh, and that, that sure. Is from the heat part portion also, put the guest agent, agent there, and the automation through the heat will be little. You're right, but there still has to be a notification framework to either the agent has to pull to say what shares exist and that I have access to based on my IP or my instance ID, or if you want that to be completely on demand then how do, we, how do we actually subscribe via that guest agent to some type of a queue or, or a pub sub network to figure that out? And there's security around that. And the, you know, so there's a whole slew of problems, right? It's a, if it's an easy problem, we would have solved it by now, right? So. <laughs> exactly. So that's why we've, we recognize that. We want to go towards a pluggable model that allows you to select whatever you want or, or nothing if you want some external automation framework like a puppet or a chef. If it knows I'm going to go and create a share, fine, then it will know the credentials and it can connect it in. So, yes? Uh, is there any difference between the level of maturity depending on the VLAN-based access or the XLAN-based access? So how feasible it is uh, to, to use a 
Manila right now on Ilan, uh, on standard Ilan based infrastructure, network infrastructure. So I mean, we've ha we have a couple of POCs where it's been shown to work. There's actually a session uh, right after this one um, that we'll talk about a use case with SAP where we're actually provisioning VLANs uh, for an SAP workload with Manila. Um, so it's certainly been done. Um, you know, I know a lot of our Neutron code has been uh, a bit in flux in terms of figuring out how do we make it more of a pluggable framework. So I don't, ben, you want to comment on, any more on that? Yeah, it's on the it's on the back end storage to what you support. Some products don't support any yeah. things like NetApp supports just VLANs today. So it, it's figuring out these models. Do we do we want to deploy an open vSwitch bridge to do this work? Do we want to deploy a VM to do that work? Yeah, it's, it's there's a whole slew of approaches that we would need to consider. So, Thanks. sure. So you need to have or uh, or VLAN or VX VLAN mm -hmm. on the start to be able to make a driver for Manila. To make a driver for Manila? No, you can support just layer two as well if you've done a flat network from, from a provider perspective with Neutron. But then you'll have all of your shares you know, available on the same layer three network and that may not meet the use case, right? So, but for a lot of environments, that's how it exists today and that's fine, right? Um, but in a cloud specific context where I want each tenant to have its own set of VLANs, I want complete isolation and shares to be offset. There be no layer two access to anything else. Then, right? Then you have to start to move towards that segmented model. So. All right, guys. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you. And there's also surveys here, so please feel give us some feedback in terms of the content, what you liked, what you didn't like. We'd really appreciate hearing from you, um, and appreciate the attendance. And have a great summit. Thank you. Thank you.